Welcome to today's adventure. What we've got is we've got a pair of pumps here. A Buick 40 to 51. One is a five number 529. One is a 530. The only difference between these two is the arm. I happen to have a couple of arms to show what the difference is. This is from the 529 which is the 40 and 50 series. And this is for the 60, 70, 80 and 90 series which would be the 530. Could also have two different other numbers that would be either stamped on the flange, the mounting flange, right around this edge. Uh, sometimes they'll stamp it across the top on the 529, which is the 40 and 50 series, it would be 1537, 337. On the 530, which is the, uh, for the bigger model, 1537, 338. Like I said before, both of these pumps are identical. They all take the same parts except the arm. You can't substitute one for the other. It'll either break it or it won't work. This particular customer is looking for a rebuild on a 529. <clears throat> so we're going to take care of that today. We're going to freshen it up and make it like brand new again. Stand by. We'll walk you through it. In order to mount this and be able to work on it, we're going to take this dome off just so that it fits in the vise so that I can work on it. I'll show you the where the number is stamped on this. Right across here. It could be anywhere on this flange. I'm going to mount it on the vise. I'm going to do the vacuum side first. See is how this can go any way, any one of what I consider ten different ways. <clears throat> We're going to have to mark this so that it goes back on the exact same way it did before. You can either take a picture of it <clears throat> or some people take a hacksaw, just run a scratch across so that you mark the body and the casting to make it go back on the same way keep the orientation of the inlet and outlet in the same spot it was. You want to remove this top cover. This bolt will have a fiber washer underneath it. Let me see if we can kick it up a little bit. few minor adjustments. Anyway, this will have a fiber washer. And if you are, are going to do this at home and you order a kit, a new washer, a new fiber washer will come with the kit. cover. And there's a gasket right here. Remove that. On occasion there is a filter right in here with a, uh, a little piece of metal that holds it down. I think I have one here somewhere. We can show you what it looks like. The screen goes in there, fits right in that little ledge that's right there. And then this goes on top of it. And when you put the cover back on, 
cover hits this and holds it down. I don't replace them. I throw them away. I don't see any need to filter the air. And GM stopped using it, or AC stopped using it quite a few years ago. But there, if you want it, you can put it in there. If not, just leave it out. Take out these 10 screws, actually take out 9 of them. Hold on the last one until you got your hand on the top. And I'll show you why. Now that you've got the 9 screws out, <coughs> hold your hand over the top. Take that last screw out. Reason being is there's a pretty tough spring underneath here. Sometimes these will pop up by themselves. Sometimes they won't. They're stuck. It's just been so many years have been held together. The, uh, the diaphragm just kind of holds it. I take a putty knife, put it on that diaphragm few taps and you'll pop it up. Now if you weren't holding on that, it would send it to the moon. And that spring will follow it. This gives you your inlet and outlet spring um, valves. Remove that center screw. And the clamp that holds them down. And these will just pop out. There's also a gasket. You gotta remove that gasket too. You get new valves, you get new gaskets. This is the uh, seat for the spring. And here's the seal for the vacuum side. Spring loaded. Spring, the washer, the seal, and the other washer. And that edge of that seal sits on this edge right in here and keeps oil from coming up into the vacuum side. <coughs> Down inside of this hole, you'll find. Filter, or it's called, uh, I call it horse hair, because that's probably what it is. But if you're going to clean this, if you're going to clean the pump or wash it in any kind of solvent, you'll want to take that out. This is another one of those things that sometimes I put them back in, sometimes I don't. But there's a, a wire. A U-shaped wire that goes down inside here that uh, that holds it in. If you can get it to one side, you can usually pick out this. You can usually pick out all the, the hair out of it. Uh, you don't have to watch me do that. Anyway, flip it over, back in the vise. Fuel side. Again, mark the location of the top casting to the body casting. Remove that bolt. There's a fiber washer underneath here, a gasket, and there's also a filter in here.
Use that fiber washer. That's got to come off of there. Now the bowl is probably stuck. What I do is I'll take a hammer and just tap, just constantly tapping, and it eventually breaks it loose. You just got to break the seal between that cork gasket and that metal cover. And there's this fuel strainer. Don't forget this is in here. If you're uh, doing regular maintenance on your car, tune up, you want to change that filter. Make sure you get all of that, all the old cork off of there. This is another one of those, not got off of important, but remove nine of the screws, hold on the last one. Now do the last screw. And again, it's stuck. Use your putty knife. Just to separate. Is your inlet and outlet valves. Same as the vacuum side. Remove that center screw and the clamp. And then just pop the valves out. Don't forget the gaskets. Fuel diaphragm. This is hooked on a link inside. There's a couple of different ways, a few different ways you can do it to unhook it. You can take this out of the vise and look underneath, get a screwdriver in and pop it off there. You can take the pin out, hold a little pressure on it and slide everything out through that way. Or you want to take the diaphragm, push it down a little bit back and then this way. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm going to do one of the ways that I told you to. We'll take a little pressure off. and pop it out. It's tough when you can't see down inside there. But we'll get it. Yeah, there's one more way I added to it. Hold on to the back of the diaphragm, take your hammer, and hit down on the plate while you're pulling it back. It releases it. It's the, it's the spring that controls the fuel pressure, the seat that it sits on, and the diaphragm assembly. The things you'll get new are this assembly, you'll get a new vacuum assembly. Everything is all put together. You're going to reuse the seat and the spring. Down on down inside of here is a seal. Take a, a large screwdriver and hook it on the edge of the, the uh, metal and just puck it back. It'll remove it. Now some companies that use this retainer their seal goes in what I consider upside down. Ours, we use a different retainer, and the seal's going to go right side up. It's going to sit in here. But you're going to use a new seal assembly anyway. 
if you suspect that there's a problem in here, if, if the arm twists, uh, pulls in and out, you know, if you suspect there's a problem with it, you'll have to take the pin out. In order to do that, you cut that washer right there and drive the pin out. There's a spring down inside of there. There's also the two links that are down inside. And that one, that shiny one that's around the outside is the vacuum. And that center one there is for the fuel. And everything will slide out. There's also a sleeve that goes in here. It's only if you suspect a problem. This one here is, everything is nice and snug. There's no reason to take that out of there. So I'm not going to. So this piece is ready to be, uh, take a tip to my glass bead tank. Take all the castings and I'll clean them all up. And we'll clear coat them. Resurface all of these surfaces here. Anywhere that the that anything's going to mate, you're going to have a diaphragm. Anywhere that these things are going to meet together has to be flattened. Run it on a belt sander. If you don't have a belt sander, um, get a uh, a piece of sandpaper. Put it on a nice flat table or a piece of glass and just keep rubbing the thing back and forth until it's shiny all the way around. I'll show you what that looks like, the, the results you should have when this is done. Now that all this, everything's all nice and clean, went through the bead blaster, it's been all clear coated, and we ran it over the belt sander. And I had to do it without the without the glare. It's been all resurfaced. This area is all nice and flat. Same thing with the fuel and the body itself. Now that everything's nice and flat, first thing we're going to do is install the seal for this side. Now this pump has been rebuilt, it was rebuilt previous obviously to me getting it, by a, a company called Chem. Now what they've done is, this area down here where the seal normally sits, it must have been all broken apart, because they put a... Uh, they put a replacement in there. Oh yeah, I can see down this side of here where a piece of the casting is missing. So they put a new seat in there, something for the seal to sit on. It works. It's effective. Now we're going to put our seal in it. I'll show you what our seal looks like. We have aluminum retainer. You can see that edge right there that little lip and the lip on this on the seal sits right into it and it sits just like that down inside remember their other seal the original seals sat the other way around Put the seal in there first, put the retainer on top, and just, just tap the thing down. You notice how the sound changed? It bottomed out. Now you want to dimple the casting like they did in four spots. What I did is I took a chisel and flattened out the end of it, no longer a point, and I use that to, to do any uh, crimping.
and all that'll do is keep that retainer from working its way out. Take a little motor oil, put it on that seal on the center, just so that the bull rod doesn't run dry. Now the diaphragm assembly that you'll get will either have this type of plate on it or it'll have a small I'll have a small smooth plate that you'd use the, uh, the retainer I took off of the other one. This one here with this style plate doesn't need a retainer. Doesn't need a seat, I mean. This is where you do in the fuel side first. Hook down inside and hook that. You want to hook that on. Eh, you probably can't see it. But you're hooking that pull rod onto that link that comes down through the center. And set it aside. We're going to put some very simple steps. Take two washers. Put one in each pocket. Now if you forget how you took the valves out, if you look down inside here you see this hole is smaller, this hole is smaller <laughs> than this one here. If you put this in this way, it'll hit on the rubber uh, plate that's here. So you want to put it with the rivet side up, and the other one goes rivet side down. Put the clamp on. The center screw and snug it down. Set your screen on, gasket, a hole, a fiber washer on the bolt. Now just to do a uh, kind of a quick test, we want to be able to blow air in. No, this is going to be the outlet, so we want to be able to suck air out and not blow air in. <laughs> that tells me that that valve is working, the seal under the valve is, is correct. The same thing with this one here, we want to be able to blow air in and not pull air out. And that tells me the other valve is good. So you're, you've got a good seal here, you got a good seal up top, and valves are sealed. There's no reason why this has any problems. We want to do the same, same valve setup as on the vacuum side, and you'll, it's easy to see the casting is the hole is smaller than this one here. Put your two gaskets in. Don't forget to put these gaskets in or the valves won't seat. They won't seal. Remember that one with the small hole, the rivet goes up. Now these are a little they're a little tight, so you might just tap them. Just to see them in. Put the 
clamp on and a screw. Top cover, gasket. Watch these little, these two little tabs. Keep away from that bolt. New fiber washer. One thing to keep in mind when you're tightening down any of these screws or bolts or anything is you're uh, you're going into a cast aluminum. So keep that in mind. Don't over tighten it. <laughs> Kinda hard to blow in through this hole, only because this thing is in the way. But that's ready. Vacuum diaphragm. Conical spring, you're getting a kit. The large washer. Push it down and turn it. The leather seal. You want the rough side facing up. The other washer with the two notches. You want the, the cone to be up. It just keys in. We're ready for some assembly. Okay, here's a step that you you don't want to skip. Find your reference mark wherever you made a mark to be able to put that back on the way it came off. Obviously we're doing the fuel side first. Put in two screws, opposite one off of each opposite each other. Get an adjustable wrench, something to put on the arm to give you some leverage. Pull it up a little bit. Catch these two screws, run them down about halfway, just so that it holds it. Stick the rest of the screws in, and again, just run them, run them down about halfway. Once you've got these screws down about halfway, we want to grab your adjustable wrench. Pull that up as far as it'll go. What you're doing is you can just hold it there. You're preloading the diaphragm. Helps it last longer, keeps it from wearing out quicker, keeps it from tearing and elongating the holes. Tighten, tighten down four of these screws. Keeping that arm tight. You can release the pressure off it and tighten down the rest of the screws. And once all the screws are tight, you can check it one more time with the, with the arm relaxed. Put your finger over the inlet, try to pull it up, and you'll feel it trying to suck your finger in. For the outlet, you want to hold it up, block off. On this particular one, there's two outlets. Remember where that dome went. Pull it up, block them off, and release it. And you'll feel pressure going out. And that'll tell you that you got a good seal around the bottom, you got a good seal around here, which you do anyway. 
<coughs> because you tested it before. Flip it over, do the vacuum side. We want to put our adjustable back on. Let's push it down. Uh, you probably can't see it, but let's see if I can move it around here so you can see it and better understand what I'm talking about. Now you'll see those two, see the two links right together? And I might not be able to do this. If you pull that all the way down, the links come right up near the top. Makes it a lot easier to hook the vacuum diaphragm on. Again, you want to go down inside and hook it. Hook this up. It makes it a lot easier. To be sure that you catch both of those with this, what you think is in the center, you should be able to turn this and have about half a hole to either side. Get the spring seat. Spring. Be careful because you can unhook that real easy. Again, find your reference point. Your reference marks, I should say. Put in two screws, one opposite each other. Set that right down inside, and you can see up in the center, see the post in the center? It's going to go right down to the center of this spring. Just line it up. It's pretty tricky, because you're, while you're pushing this down, it's pushing that, pulling that diaphragm down inside. And it makes it so that you can't catch the holes on the other side. So, what I do is with that screw in there, put something on the arm, pull it down, and it'll, it'll actually push that diaphragm up. And you're able to catch It'll push the hole in the diaphragm around so that you can, the screw will actually drop right into it. Run it down again about halfway. Be careful because it'll, the diaphragm can pull down inside, which it did right in here. I'll show you how to take care of that. What I suggest to everybody is to use a popsicle stick. I happen to have a little thin screwdriver. Catch it in here and push it out. And I'm able to stick that screw down through, get it caught. Run these down about halfway again. Now you might run into the same problem on the other side. And usually it's up in the front here. But this time it looks like it's going to be good. If you have to, move that arm down. So that it flattens out the diaphragm. Now just the opposite of the fuel side, on the vacuum side you want that diaphragm to lay flat. You don't want it to be up or down. If you watch the edge, you'll tell when it goes flat. Hold it, tighten down the screws.
again, if you catch four of them, you, then you're able to release the pressure off the arm. Tighten down the rest of the screws. Now that all those screws are tight, you can test this side. Push the thing down, push the arm down, you'll feel pressure pushing out. Now you'll be able to test the other side. Push the arm down as you're coming up. You'll feel it trying to pull your finger in. One last thing to do is to put the put the dome back on. complete. One thing you want to do is, one thing you don't want to do is use Teflon tape. Always use Teflon paste if you have to. But in these pipe threads, if they're worn a little bit, you'll have to use some kind of sealant on them. Teflon paste. Same thing with this side and all the others. And as of right now, this is ready to go back on a car. Or, in our case, it's going back on the shelf. If someone wants to buy one, we'll have it ready. This one here will be done shortly. I hope this helps. I'm sure it will help the uh, person that's at home rebuilding it. Feel free to leave any comments if you want to uh, subscribe to our channel, catch any future videos that come out. Uh, feel free, click the like button, and any questions, give us a call. Then-now.com is our website, 781-335-8860. That brings today's adventure to an end. Everybody stay safe out there. Thanks for watching.